Welcome back to the channel. This is the Action Figure Grader, and as I do every single month, I'm going to cover some of the awesome CGC graded comic books that sold recently over on Comic Link. And I picked some different ones this time. I've got some of the usual suspects, as you can see, Star Wars one, but I picked a few others that I was watching or bidding on and I was considering going after. I ended up going after nothing. Uh, but these are all uh, got, got listed on Comic Link towards the middle of March, and they ended kind of end of March and into the beginning of April. I didn't include everything that I wanted to because some of the auctions are still going right now. For example, this Marvel Comics Presents number 79, I was originally going to cover that one. But because of my work schedule, it hasn't finished yet, and I know for a fact I'm not going to have time to make this video after this gets done. So right now I think the bid's at 425 on that one. I expect that one to go kind of 450. But the rest of these I, I did uh, manage to kind of wait until they, they close. This is one I was really interested in. This is a CGC 6.0 with white pages for ASM number three, the fir origin and first appearance of Dr. Octopus. Probably one of my top books that I, I want to get right now. And I just got, let's see, I've got ASM 14, which is the Green Goblin, and I've got ASM number 50, which is the first appearance of Kingpin. So I'm kind of working my way through the Silver Age Spider-Man books for the first appearance of villains, but uh, this is one I really, really want to get. And a 6.0 is a probably about as high as I can go, and the fact that it was white pages made this one really tempting, and I, I just... I decided not to spend any more money this month. Uh, I just I feel like I, I spend way too much on Hakes anyway, so I let it go. I, I did let it go. It sold for four thousand dollars, which was actually lower than I was expecting. Um, I was kind of budgeting forty five hundred dollars for it because of the white pages. Usually, there's about a ten or twenty percent premium versus six point ohs with off white or off white to white versus a true white pager. So. Whether it was truly a white pager anymore, I don't know. I mean, it was an older grade to it, but I didn't really care. I wanted it so, so bad, but I decided not to. I, I ended up going for an ASM number 11 on Comic Connect uh, in, a, in the same grade, 6.0 white pages, which is the second appearance of Dr. Octopus, and it cost me about a quarter of what this one goes for, so... Uh, I like this one better, obviously, but uh, just wasn't meant to be right now. Hopefully, sometime before the end of the year, I'm going to add this one in, you know, any somewhere between a 5 and a 7.0 would be my goal. So we'll see what happens. But that, I thought that was a good deal at, at $4,000, um, you know, just based on everything I saw on Go Collect and GPA, I, I just thought it would be more like $4,500. So that came in a lot lower than I expected. Here is, uh, what, this is not the one I bought, but... Uh, this is the book I did get in a different grade. This one was a 6.5 off white to white pages. Again, ASM number 11. The second appearance of Dr. Octopus is still a great cover. This is a great cover. Mine has white pages. This and it was a 6.0. This one was 6.5 off white to white. And they were both ending right around the same time. Mine on Comic Connect. This one on Comic Link. I ended up going for the white pages and slightly lower grade versus this one that was a 6.5. This one also had a bad crease going along the bottom of it that was fairly pronounced that you can see there at the at the bottom. So in my opinion, I thought the book that I bought was the better one. And th this one ended up actually going for a little bit less than what I paid for mine after accounting for the buyer's premium and shipping and things like that. I paid about $125 more. Uh, this one sold for $825, even though it was a higher grade. It was off white to white pages versus mine that was white pages without that bad crease right there. So whenever it gets here, I've been kind of overdue to do a comic book collection update. I've got like 15 books I've added over the last three and a half or four months that I've not shown on the channel yet. So I'll, I'll, I'll wait for this one to get here from Comic Connect. It's my first time buying from Comic Connect. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, they take a long time to ship uh, relative to Comic Link. Link. Comic Link usually ships immediately. But I found that Comic Connect is not. So <laughs> uh, and that's fine. Uh, next up is another one I'd like to get. This is ASN number 51, the second appearance of Kingpin and the first cover appearance of Kingpin. Uh, his first appearance in ASM number 50, which I do have, is that iconic John Romita cover with Spider-Man in the on the red background. And he's kind of walking away from the Spider-Man uh, Spider uh, 
I don't know, in the background. So it's a very iconic cover, but Kingpin doesn't actually show up on the cover. This is his first comic cover appearance, so I would like to get this one. And my scroller is not working very well. In the clutches of the Kingpin, just a great looking cover with his goons surrounding a beaten up Spider-Man. So this one was a 9-4 off white to white pages and sold for twenty two ten, which was about where I was expecting. Um, and, you know, that's about the grade I'd like to get. It's not nearly as expensive as ASM number 50. And in this grade, for an ASM 50, you're talking, I don't know, fifteen or $20,000. But for his second appearance, uh, you can get that in a pretty reasonable grade. This one had some some Newton rings, unfortunately, but that did sell at twenty two ten. dollars uh, Here is ASM number 59. This is the first cover appearance of Mary Jane Watson. Not my favorite cover. Not my favorite. It's kind of, I don't know, it's a little goofy. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's probably one I'd still like to get, don't get me wrong, but uh, probably not uh, high on the list right now. And that one, let's see, that one sold for seven sixty six in a 9.6 uh, and that was with white pages. So it's a very affordable book, even in high grade. Uh, next up, we had uh, one that I really wanted to get. This is ASM number 122, a book I've talked about in the past. Uh, this is The Death of the Green Goblin, pretty iconic cover. And, um, you know, this one was signed by Stan Lee in Silver Marker, right on the Green Goblin's hover hoverboard. And so this is one, I, I don't know what grade I'm going to end up going for, but this was kind of... I, th I thought if I get a 9.4 with Stan Lee's auto, I was budgeting on this one when I was kind of originally thinking about bidding on it. I was I was thinking 17.50, and it ended up selling for 13.57. So I thought that was a great deal. 9.4 White Pages Signature Series signed by Stan Lee, The Death of the Green Goblin, a pretty iconic cover, The Green Goblin's Last Stand in a 9.4. Uh, so I thought 1350 was a bargain relative to all the other ones I looked at on Go Collect that were signature series nine fours. Uh, I was, you know, based on those, I was thinking it was going to be 1750. So 1350 was a bargain. Uh, next up was ASM number 316, and this is a book we've talked about in the past, but this was the newsstand edition. So this is the true full cover appearance of Venom, a pretty iconic Todd McFarlane cover but the harder to find newsstand. And for the longest time, they've kind of been going $1,100 to $1,200 for the longest time. So that was what I was expecting this one to go for. This one ended up selling for $1,005. So down about 10% or so relative to some of the recent sales that I seem to remember off the top of my head from Facebook or uh, YouTube, or not YouTube, but uh, eBay, things like that. So that was a good deal. I thought that was a really, really good deal. Next up was an interesting one. This one is Detective Comics 411, which is the first appearance of Talia Al Ghul, Raza Ghul's daughter. Uh, but this was only a 9 and it, but it was signed by Neil Adams in nice silver marker there in the black. It did have an overwrap, a really bad overwrap on the left-hand side that you can see there. But that was a pretty awesome book. And I wasn't serious about it. I just kind of wanted to see what it would sell for um, because I think if I get this book, I'd like to get it in like a 9.4, maybe 9.6 if I'm lucky. But it's a pretty expensive book once you start getting into those high grades because there's not many of them on the CGC census in a high grade. But I've got Ra's al Ghul's first appearance, which is Batman number 232. But this one would be a nice pairing with it because it's also a Neil Adams cover and it's Ra's al Ghul's daughter's first appearance, which obviously she made a pretty big appearance in the original Christopher Nolan trilogy in The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, Dark Knight Rises, I think it was the third movie. Yeah, the, the third movie with Bane. She was kind of the secret bad guy, spoiler alert, uh, Talia al Ghul. So anyway, this one was a beauty though, and it was tempting, but uh, I think with the overwrap and the lower grade, I decided to keep looking. Uh, but Detective Comics 405, which is the first appearance of... The League of Assassins, and Detective Comics 411, uh, which is Talia Ghoul's first appearance. Those are two big Neil Adams covers that I'd like to pick up. So we'll see if that happens or not. That one's still sold in a 9.0 for 1458. 1458. Some other Batman books. I wasn't serious about this one, but I just love this cover. It's a Golden Age key book. This is from 1944, Batman number 23. So it's a pretty awesome Joker cover showing... <laughs> Showing the Joker playing Batman in chess or checker, I guess chess. And you got 
Robin looking on. It did have the date stamp Marvel or the DC date stamp there, or April 10th. And this one was in a 6-0, off white to white pages. And, you know, it, it's a, a pretty iconic book, but, you know, I, I had no idea what to go for. I don't really, I don't really keep track of golden age books very much, but I just love the, what that cover. That one ended up selling for 2801 in a 6.0. Next up was uh, one I'd definitely like to get because I'm into these first appearance of villains covers for Batman. And this is from 1966, a Carmine Inf Infantino cover uh, in a CGC 8.5, Batman number 181, the first appearance of Poison Ivy. And I don't, I don't, I don't really love this cover, to be honest with you. It's kind of, I don't know, I, I don't think it does a very good job of capturing the allure of Poison Ivy. Uh, Poison Ivy is kind of like known to be sexy and, you know, the later portrayals of her in not only the comics, but in the movies, she's always been kind of a sexy figure. She looks like a weightlifter in this, in this, <laughs> in this comic cover. So I've never been in love with the cover, but I do think I'm probably going to get it because I'd like to get all of the first appearance of the Batman villains. I'm slowly m working my way through them. Uh, it's a great book. It's a great book. But again, just not my favorite cover. But it was a high grade, 8.5 white pages. That's a pretty high grade for this book and probably about as high as I can go for it. That one sold for $39.25. So big number on that. Batman Beyond number one. This is one we've covered here recently in an eBay CGC comic market update. This one was the direct edition and uh, it had been going kind of 950 ish. Uh, so pretty nice book there. First comic book appearance of Terry McGinnis, who's Batman Beyond. That one sold for 905. So after the 3% buyer's premium, you're probably talking what about 930 plus shipping is probably 950. So it's, you know, 950 is about the going rate right now after you factor in all the expenses for it. Next up, Batman 428. This is another one on my want list. This is the death of Robin 2, Jason Todd. I, I picked up Jason Todd's first appearance, which is Batman 357. I picked up Jason Todd's first costume appearance in the Robin costume, which is Batman 266. And this one would be a nice pairing to go with those other two. So this is The Death of Jason Todd, a pretty iconic book and very tough to find in a 9.8, surprisingly, maybe because of the black cover. But there's actually not a ton of these in a 9.8, despite it being a 1988 book. So you, it was I was surprised when I saw the CGC census that there weren't more of these available. But Anyway, this one uh, did sell, and it sold for two ninety three. Which on eBay they've been going kind of four fifty to five hundred. So that was a great deal at two ninety three. And I had it on my watch list, and I was planning on bidding on it, and then I fell asleep. That's exactly what happened. I, I, I would love to tell you that it was something else, but this one ended at eleven thirty five p.m. So that's well past my bedtime. I value my sleep more than I value comic books, and I forgot about it. So <laughs> it did sell, but there's another one coming up, so I'm sure I'll get one at some point. It's not that hard to find. Uh, this is one I did pick up on Instagram. Uh, this one is Batman Harley Quinn, the origin and first appearance of Harley Quinn in DC continuity. So in DC Universe continuity. Her first appearance out of DC continuity is her most expensive book, which is Batman Adventures 12. Her first her origin story outside of DC Universe continuity is Mad Love. So I've got all three of them now because I told you guys that this is one that was on my want list for this year. So I did pick this one up on Instagram. It had some scuffs on it, but every every single one of them does. I, I can't I can't find one super clean. This one looks super clean, and a lot of them do look super clean in the photos. And then when you get it, you see all these scuffs on the inner well. So. It's just one of those books. This one and Dark Knight Rises, number one, it's almost impossible to find one without inner well scuffs for whatever reason. And that's a testament to the poor quality control at CGC, if you ask me. But anyway, this one did sell. This one sold for $432. I paid $449 shipped for mine, which is right in line with what this one is. If not, this one's actually more expensive once you factor in shipping. So I feel pretty good about my purchase price. Next up, Batman Vengeance of Bane special, number one. This is the first appearance of Bane. Uh, this is one I still want to get. I keep forgetting about it. I bought one for my brother, and then I haven't bought one for myself. This one sold for three hundred five, which that's about right. I've actually seen them on eBay go for as low as about two eighty. So that's a that's a nice book. Pretty easy to find. Pretty high census number. Not particularly expensive. Uh, next up, we had Daredevil one sixty eight in a nine point eight grade. This is the first appearance of Elektra in comics. So I don't know if I want to. I'm still on the fence on this one. 
because Electra is not really a character that I'm obsessed with or anything like that. But I do like this cover a lot. And I do like Elektra. Uh, I do like Daredevil comics. I've got several key issue Daredevil books. But I don't know. It's just an expensive book. It's a really expensive book. And I don't know if I like Elektra enough to get it. So this one sold for $1,900. This one was the direct edition. There is a newsstand as well, so which I don't know what that one would go for. Probably not much more expensive because it is a 1981 book. So I'm guessing twenty three dollars to $2,500 for the newsstand. Uh, next up, I've got some Fantastic Four books that I've had my eye on lately. Um, Fantastic Four, number 48. This is the first appearance of Silver Surfer and Galactus in Cameo. And this one was an 8.0 with white pages. That one sold for $31.73. I kind of have my eye on that one. I'm not going to lie. It's it's a low it's a low likelihood kind of kind of buy. I think I'd actually prefer Fantastic Four, number 49 which is the first full appearance of Galactus. Uh, but this one's a more important, more expensive book, but I like the cover better on 49. So maybe one day I'll get both. This is another one I really would like to pick up. This is Journey into Mystery number 112. And this is the first fight between Thor and Hulk. And this is an awesome Jack Kirby cover. This is from 1965, and this one was high grade, 9.6 with off-white pages, and that one sold for 51.10. So I, I think if I get this one, it's going to be like a 9.0, 9.2, something like that. But uh, 9.6, that's a very high grade. That's the highest grade I've actually seen for this book for sale. Maybe on Heritage, there's been some 9.8s, but that's a really awesome book, awesome cover. And I always like those kind of first battle books, and this is just a classic Jack Kirby cover. And it sold for big money, 5110. Uh, and then there was also an 8.5 for the same book that sold. That one sold for $955. So this one was freshly graded off white to white pages. And that's about right. That's about where I'd want to spend uh, 8.5 or a 90 for this book. But I just think it's a great book. I, I don't know if it's ever going to be worth anything more, but, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a buy and hold forever type of book, a classic, you know, Silver Age book that. I think will hold its value over time. And I just like the kind of classic look for the Hulk. You know, it's a very kind of rudimentary look to his face. And, you know, Thor, you know, Jack, Jack Kirby's done a lot of great Thor covers. And this is definitely one of them in a very affordable classic and in, in about this grade, 8.0, 8.5, 90, somewhere in there. So, uh, two different Star Wars books did sell that I wanted to cover. This one was a 9.8. White pages, pretty nice centering on that one. No bleed through on the logo. That one sold for thirty-one fifty, and then you had this one that sold, which had a slight under wrap. You know, you can tell it was not slightly wrapped perfectly, but the colors on this one were a much brighter. Uh, the one that sold for thirty-one fifty had some fading to the cover. This one was very bright and vibrant. It was also freshly graded. That one sold for $3,699. So anywhere from $3,100 to about $3,700 is the going rate right now, depending on how good the colors are, depending on how good the wrap is, things like that. It's a pretty wide range right now, but the, the prices have come down off of the highs of about $4,000. They're kind of hovering now, I'd say around $3,500, anywhere in that ballpark. Fourth print of Darth Vader number three which is the harder to find fourth print. This is the first appearance of Dr. Afra. That one sold for a good deal, $328. On eBay, they've been going kind of $400, $425. So I thought that was a really good deal there. Ultimate Fallout 4 continues to drop, but I, I just can't make any sense of this. Uh, this book has got so many books on the census, everyone takes a dump on it on Instagram. Nobody wants to buy this book, but it's still continuously going for about $1,100. There was one that did sell on Instagram recently that looked to be nice that sold for 1000 bucks. This one sold for 1110 So the prices are still coming down on this book. I, I said about a year ago or maybe six, nine months ago that if it got below $1,400, I'd be interested. And I'm glad I waited because it continues to go down. There's a lot of comic book experts, quote unquote experts on Instagram that think this is going to be an eight or nine hundred dollar book by the summer. I hope they're right. I hope they're right because I'd like to pick it up. The first print of Ultimate Fallout 4, the first appearance of Miles Morales. Again, I don't I don't know if I necessarily care about this from an investment perspective, but I love Miles Morales. I love the movies, and I want to have it in my collection. That's just all there is to it. So uh, hopefully it does come down below a 1000 bucks 
uh, this summer because if it hits like eight or nine hundred bucks, I, I'm going to pull the trigger on it. It's just too good of a book, too too good of a character to not have in my collection. The census be damned. I don't care how many of them there are on the census. I want to have one in my collection. We're going to finish things off with a couple of X-Men books I've never talked about. This was a, a 9.8 with off white to white pages for X-Men number 102 from 1976. I just thought it was a great cover. And this is also the origin of Storm. So uh, a book I had never really focused on or knew about, to be honest with you, but pretty great cover. It's got Nightcrawler there. It's got Colossus fighting the Juggernaut, and you've got Storm in the corner there. And this is her origin story. So I just thought it was a cool book. And that one sold for $1,100. I, I haven't kept track of this book or know what, what the values are, but that seems to be about right for a 1976 9.8. Uh, here was another beauty. This was a 9.8 White Pages for X-Men number 104. And this is the first appearance of Star Jammers in Cameo. And this is also a comic book homage to X-Men number one. So I just thought that was a, a great cover and would be a nice addition to my Wolverine comics. I've got several X-Men books with you know a focus on Wolverine. And this is not really focused on Wolverine, but he's on the cover and it's a nice cover homage. I wouldn't mind picking this one up. That one sold for twelve sixty six. So twelve sixty six nine point eight white pages for X Men number one hundred four from nineteen seventy seven, the year I was born. So this book is forty seven years old. Uh, pretty amazing book. So. Anyway, I just wanted to cover some of the recent sales over on Comic Link. I hope you enjoyed this look at these sales. Please leave a like and comment below, and I'll be back soon.